Welcome, everyone, to Midday Magazine for this October 27th, 2023. Joining us right now are some of our favorite people from the Wood County Health Department. We want to welcome in Nikki and Christy. Good morning, you two, or should I say good afternoon, you two. Good morning. Hey, thanks good afternoon. For- Hey, thanks for being. We got it all. We got it. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, good night. We'll get them all in. We'll get them all in. You never know when people are listening. You know, these are podcasted. Who knows? Um, any chance we have to talk with our Wood County Health Department, we'd love to take that. Appreciate the time and always like to, to kick things off with thanking you and your staff and everything you do for our community, keeping us help and healthy and safe. We appreciate you. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let, let's go ahead and get to uh, what we our main topic today: the Wood County Community Healthy uh, Health Survey. Uh, Nikki, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have our big community health survey. Um, it's done every three years, and it's really the foundation for our community-based work. So we are trying to get as much input from the community as possible. Uh, The Community Health Survey was created by the Wood County Health Department, Aspirus Riverview Hospital and Clinics, and the Marshfield Clinic Health System. So we all work together to create that survey um, as a way to get the community's opinion about factors that are impacting health within the county. Hmm. Nikki, when it comes to these surveys, uh, how, how much does this data help you and the team over there? It helps us a ton. I mean, it really is the foundation for the work that we do moving forward. So all of our community-based work is determined from our community health assessment, which is done once every three to five years. We follow the hospital's cycle, which is every three years, so that we're not duplicating work. So the input that we get from this survey really helps us determine what are the top priorities rising up within the county and that then tells us what we need to work on for the next three years what issue areas what focus areas we should focus our efforts in on to improve those areas within the community yeah you know i think that most people are used to seeing surveys or getting a survey or maybe you see it from uh, this organization or, or maybe a nonprofit or something and those are all great surveys encourage people to fill all those out then there's something like this where it is vital it, it is so important for you to be able to fill out this survey get them that data all they're trying to do is keep us healthy all they're trying to do is take care of our area our city our our, our whole community here um, the be- the least we can do and one of the best things we can do to help you guys do that is give you data, is give you more information so you can make those decisions. Yeah, absolutely. And we we really want to hear from the community. You know, residents should have the strongest voice when it comes to decisions like this. Um, we, we want you to tell us what we should be working on. Um, there's a, a saying out there, those who are closest to the problem are closest to the solution. Mm-hmm. And it's really important for us to hear from the community what what is going on within the different areas of the county? What are the things that are really impacting people's health? And, uh, you know, this survey, just this, it, it is the prime, primary way that we get feedback from the community to tell us what we should work on. You know, Nikki, maybe it wouldn't be bad if we touched on and reminded people of the, the mission of the Wood County Health Department. Yeah, so the mission of the health department is maximizing quality of life across the lifespan. Um, So that goes, you know, all the way from pregnancy through to older adults. All the above. Um, And and that that means uh, everybody needs to fill out these surveys. I'm talking to you, six-year-olds. I'm talking – no, no, I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) But it is – it it does remind me, too, that when it comes to these surveys, yes, it's important that we all do, and we need data from everybody, Uh, young, middle-aged, old, whatever you want to call it, whatever verbs you want to use. We need every type of different, you know, person in a different walk of life filling out these surveys because everybody's going to be coming at you with a a different health issue or or maybe not, but something that is going to be vital vital to the information. Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually why we have the survey available in multiple methods. So we have a paper survey um, available in both English and Spanish. So we have copies of those at the health department location. The Macmillan Library has some of those paper copies as well. Uh, The ADRC has some of those. Um, And we also have online surveys. Those are also available in English and Spanish. 
And then we have community health workers who can assist people who need Hmong and Spanish translation or just anybody who needs some help completing that survey. Hmm. Uh, if if people want to fill that out right now, uh, they hear us talking about it, it's on their mind, they want to do it, how can they do that? So they can go online and they can type in bit period Lee, so B-I-T period L-Y slash capital W O-O-D capital C-H-A. So it would read bit dot Lee slash capital Wood capital C-H-A. Or they can go to our website, healthypeoplewoodcounty.org, and there's a big green banner across the top of the website that'll tell you, click here to take the survey. Yeah, that uh, that's a really easy way to do it, too. Um, I, I tried this just to see how it would work <clears throat> and just typed into my search bar, Wood County Health Department Survey, and that gets you uh, around there, too, as well. So there, there's a couple of okay. options you have uh, to be able to find this. And we understand how hard it is to give websites over the air. <laughs> we yeah. still got to figure that one out. <laughs> got to figure out how to do that right. But uh, it is it is in a hard find, and it's so important to be able to fill this out get the Wood County Health Department the information that they need going forward so they can keep us safe and keep us healthy. I uh, I, I know, uh, Christy, we've, we've had you there. we got to put you to work now. We've got to make you do some stuff here, Christy. I uh, appreciate you joining us. And um, Christy, if you don't mind, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, health in general and, 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 and our choices uh, you know, regarding that. Yeah, thanks, James. Well, you know, Folks who end up taking the survey will realize that we're asking um, about a, a wide swath of things as it relates to health, because health is really determined by more than our choices and our access to care, which is oftentimes um, what folks think, right? They think about current health ailments, maybe, or conditions that they have, or the effect of whether or not they have access to a healthcare, a hospital, a doctor. But we know, in fact, that 80% of what makes people healthy occurs outside of that doctor visit. Mm. So there's institutional and social inequities that systemically affect the health of our communities. And simply promoting healthy choices won't eliminate those inequities. Like the existence of safe housing, public transportation, education, the jobs with fair pay, access to healthy and affordable foods opportunities and opportunities to be physically active all really impact significantly our, our health. Um, and, and so folks, it, once folks hear that and they think about, think about it, a lot of times you see this light bulb go on like, well, of course, yeah, housing, if you don't have a safe place, um, a safe place to sleep, a safe, safe place to be with your family, that could definitely impact your health with the stress that you feel. Um, and you're likely not thinking about how much physical activity you're getting in a day if you don't have a place to rest your head at night. So, mm -hmm. um, our, you know, our work is designed at the Health Department, our work is designed to improve the social, economic, and environmental conditions that impact health. And we, we use a, an approach that is more of an equitable approach. And so, of course, due to the nature of this work, the changes in health outcomes aren't something that can be achieved quickly because these are really large systemic um, you know, multifaceted uh, issues that, that take a long time to see the impact of our work in our communities. Yeah, Christy, I, I can imagine, um, you know, even dealing with this a little bit myself sometimes, um, when we look at our bodies, we look at our health, I, most of us understand, and my papa used to tell me when I was little, uh, you only get one temple, Jimmy, you got to take care of it. You can rebuy almost anything in life, you only get one body, you got to take care of it. Uh, I think most of us understand that, but as we get older and, and life gets busy and there's work, there's family, there's all these things going on, our health oftentimes takes a back seat. And by the time we get to it, it can seem quite overwhelming. Uh, I got high blood pressure. I got the bad back. I got this. I got that. Um, what do you suggest to people to kind of uh, break that down to kind of so to to be able to attack this situation that can seem so daunting sometimes? Well, the way that we approach it at the health department is really, like I said, to think about this from a much more um, institutional and social um, perspective, like looking at systemically, you know, if you mentioned, you know, the, the, by the time, like there's so many things, there's so, so many complex things. And by the time folks realize that it's affecting their health, it's almost too late. But if we set up our communities in a way that it isn't too late because people have the ability to live their healthiest lives every single day, they have, you know, affordable and adequate housing. They don't have to uh, worry about, you know, 
uh, the meals that they're going to have, um, that they, they, have, they have enough money from the jobs that they work to pay their bills and to buy, you know, good food. It's, it's really, the goal is and prevention always that we don't get there, right? That mm-hmm. we don't get to the place where it's, now it's too late and we have to walk it back. So that's, and that's why it takes such a long time. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of uh, dedication at the community level to ensure that, you know, our educational systems are good, that we have good transportation. I mean, isolation, social isolation is, is a huge deal and the cost of a vehicle and the, you know, the cost of all of those things add up for folks. So making sure that folks have access to get places where they need to go to get to the grocery store, to get uh, to places to be socially connected. Um, all of those things are going to help us uh, not have those ailments too early in life or to not get sick with, you know, stress, stress related um, chronic conditions and things of that nature. So it's really locking it backwards, right? Like us looking at the whole picture from a more holistic perspective. Yeah. You know, making the effort and the time for these things is vital. I actually, I get my workouts in during our interviews here. Um, and and no, I, it, it's important to uh, fit, make the time for these things, for your body, for your mental health. It all adds up. And when it comes to the econo- or the, the environmental parts of this and, and housing and, and econ- all these other factors, these are things that... Um, as you take care of them, they, they're, they're one thing off the checklist, and you can focus on your body more. You can focus on these other things. It all adds up. We, we, we learn more and more, it feels like, every day uh, how, how, much, how, much, how vital mental health is to our body health. And, and these kind of things all add up. They all uh, tie together. Absolutely. And, you know, these, these huge community Um, these huge um, social and economic and environmental conditions that we're working on improving in our communities take all of us. It takes, you know, the health department, we, we are a, um, a convener of organizations. We help with planning. We help um, to help to get folks to think about improvements and changes that can be made, but really it is um, only through a group of dedicated community partners and residents and organizations and all of us working together that we can in fact improve the health of our communities. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, we have Healthy People Wood County is uh, yeah. the community arm of the health department. And this is what our community health assessment and improvement plan all rolls through. And it is a partnership of, you know, residents, hospitals, nonprofits, businesses, public health officials, um, you know, community leaders, schools, and it's all of us aligning our energy to fight these complex health problems. It's such a great group. I'm so glad we have a chance to talk about this too. It's everything that I think that we 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 look for when it comes to answering our, our questions about our, our health and our community, along with also working with each other. Because that's what this is. It's a table. It's not just somebody telling you know barking orders or anything. It's a, a groups of people from different walks and different organizations coming together and being able to share information and share what what's vital to our community, what can help us best. I, I think we all understand at this point, if you didn't before the pandemic, you darn sure do now, we're stronger together. We're better together. And when we work together and we look out for each other, a, a, a group like this, the Healthy People Wood County, that, that's a, an organization doing just that. Yeah, that's exactly it. <clears throat> and together we're working on making improvements. And the, those, so that survey is what is what helps us determine what it is that we're going to work on, Mm -hmm. what's really bubbling up to the top in our community, and that's what we work on. So the ultimate goal is that our of our work is to create thriving communities where all people in Wood County have a fair opportunity to be as healthy as possible, regardless of their income, their age, their location, race, ethnicity, gender, or really any factor for that matter. And in this, uh, a rising tide raises all boats. Uh, this kind of initiative, this kind of thing, it only benefits everybody in our community. And if you want to, you know, I, looking at this at many different levels, if to those that may not be paying attention or, or not care about this as much, I, I bet you care about economics. Uh, th- this this pay, this adds to the economy of our community. If we have more healthy people, we have more people able to get to work, from work, all these things, it all adds up. Uh, this this all comes back to, you know, that being the best thing for our community. So it, there's nothing about this that doesn't hit on almost every factor and every in, in important part of our community. This organization is pretty cool. How long has this uh, been going? Um, uh, this happened, the Wisconsin State Statutes. I wanted to get into that a little bit with you. Uh, w- when yeah. did that start? 
That's a great question. So we, you know, as a health department, Nikki shared that we work with our health systems. Um, both of us have uh, have laws, have mandates uh, to do this work. And so local health departments have been doing community assessments and improvement planning since the early 1990s. 1993, actually, is when the statute um, was, beca- or when, you know, the work became a statute and was on the books that requires uh, communities throughout Wisconsin um, to develop and implement that uh, local health plan to address health conditions impacting their residents. Hmm. And that is what, you know, Nikki was talking about with this community health assessment, which is mm-hmm. why we have to do it every, you know, I say have to, it, it is a good thing that we do it hmm. um, every three to five years. Um, and just like local health departments, nonprofit hospitals also have uh, a law that was signed in effect in 2010. Um, that was a part of the Affordable Care Act uh, where, and it actually goes through the IRS so that they are required to collaborate with their local health department and complete that community health assessment hmm. and an implementation strategy. So, you know, in it makes sense for us to collaborate. We all only have so much capacity. And at the end of the day, we'd be asking our partners and our community residents the same questions. What, you know, mm-hmm. what is, what are the issues that you're seeing? What should we be working on? How should we be, um, how should we be resourcing our community in a way that we can make improvements? And so we have been working in collaboration even before 2010 mm. with Spirus and with Marshall Clinic. Um, however, I would say that those relationships have really strengthened with the passing of these laws, um, most notably the law in 2010. And um, that's really just strengthened our collaboration. You know, a lot of folks don't necessarily realize that they're, uh, that the hospitals uh, have this work that they partner with local health departments on, but it is a big part of their mission as well. And in order to maintain their nonprofit status, they they need to do this work. So we, we have some great partners in our health systems. It was a while ago that it, it came into play. Uh, so I, I think it's a nice refresher to remind people about these uh, these things that came with the, the Patient Protection and the Affordable Care Act. Um, and, and, and also, there's some... Um, there's some great, like, I don't want to say forced collaboration, but some intended and, and possibly forced collaboration with our hospitals and our health department. Uh, the, the sharing of information, people being on a similar, if not the same page, that only helps our whole community. It really does, James. You know, I think there's a, there's, I, I don't know if it, what, it's an old adage, but you know that you, we're all, oftentimes we're all working a mile wide and an inch deep. And if we can be a better aligned on priorities, we can work you know, a mile deep and an inch wide and really make a difference mm. um, versus just have skimming off the top and trying to do a bunch of so much of everything in our community and not being able to make a, a real, you know, notable difference. So it's, uh, I would say, I guess, forced collaboration. However, it's welcomed by mm. the organization right, yes. in a way that it really, uh, that it really improves our work um, the, the work that we do at the local level, um, because, you know, like you said, we're better together. Our partnerships are strong. Um, none of this work can be done alone. And if it could be done alone, it wouldn't be an issue in our community. It would already be taken care of. You know, if we knew how to solve some of these huge societal um, issues, we, we wouldn't all have be having to work together. Someone would have figured out figured it out long ago, you know. If, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For sure. It'd have been nice. It'd, it'd have been nice of them to do that, whoever that person, you know, we, we'd like that. That'd be great. But uh, until that happens, this is the way we do it. This is the way we, we make our, our community healthier and, and better. Um, and not, not for nothing, um, you just don't know what's around the corner. Uh, my Nana would always say, uh, you want to make God laugh, make plans. Um, and, and the idea that uh, we know necessarily in the next year or two years, the next virus, the next issue that could come up in our community, whether it's health related or not, uh, nobody knows. So the better we're prepared for these things with this, you know, filling out this survey, uh, keeping up to date on your, your rights and sharing your needs and your concerns with the health department and our hospitals, that's going to make us that much stronger. So, hey, knocking on wood, hoping nothing happens, nothing's going on, but nobody predicted a pandemic, and, and that happened. And we were very fortunate in this community. We, 
We lost, I'm not making light of what we lost, but it could have been a lot worse if we didn't have our health department, if we didn't have this kind of information going on. We're, we were very fortunate when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. Want to make sure to keep that going and keep filling out this survey and keep up to these things. Um, before we wrap up, I did want to ask Nikki, I did have a follow-up question about the survey. Because um, I know our listeners, and I know this one will come up from time to time too. When we're filling out this survey, uh, how long does it take usually? How, what would you say the average time it takes to fill that out, Nikki? I would say about 10 minutes. Okay. All right. It's not a big... Yeah, and uh, actually... Sorry. No, I was just going to um, say not a big time requirement. That too, there's, um, the survey is open until the end of November, I wanted to share. And as a thank you for filling out the survey, you do have the option to enter into a drawing for one of three $50 Visa gift cards. Um, you'll fill out a separate form for that, so it's in no way tied to your answers. So the survey is completely anonymous. But you are able to enter into that drawing, and we will draw for those three gift cards in December and then contact winners. Nice. Oh, that's that's very cool. I like that incentive. We are speaking with Nikki and Christy from the Wood County Health Department. And, uh, Christy, I wanted to get to the uh, uh, drug take-back day and touch on that a little bit as we're wrapping up. Yeah, thanks, James. So tomorrow, uh, October 28th, is the take-back day across the state of Wisconsin, the drug take-back day. Just to give folks a little bit of background to that, you know, um, people are prescribed medications all the time, and oftentimes they end up having um, unused or expired medications in their home and aren't sure really of what to do with them. Uh, we really, you know, it's, it's all too often that these unused and expired, expired medications find their way into the wrong hands or they're, you know, put into the water system, um, flushed down the toilet, all of those things. That's, that's really um, not what should be happening. And we definitely don't want them getting into the wrong hands. It can be dangerous. It can be uh, really tragic for folks where um, those unintentional consequences. So it's important to bring unused and expired medications to a drug take-back collection site. Um, and this is a great way to protect you and your family and your community. Mm-hmm. And so it is super easy to do. Um, you just, you know, you just bring, uh, you stop by a collection site and drop your items into a bin. Um, all the, I'll tell you um, details about the collection sites, but there's really, there's no questions asked. Um, you can be in and out in minutes. It's, it's really just a, a super simple thing. Often there'll be a law enforcement officer at the take back site as well as, um, you know, a volunteer helping. And so the different things that you can bring um, include prescription and over-the-counter medications that they may be disposed, including capsules, creams, inhalers, non-aerosol sprays, ointments, patches, pills, vials. Um, so it's just important uh, that, that folks know. Um, we also accept there, or there also will be accepted vape pens um, with the batteries removed and other e-cigarette devices are accepted with the batteries removed. So mm-hmm. our um, <clears throat> there are take-back days in all of the, well, let's see, six of our, of our communities, Marshfield, Nakusa, Port Edwards, Pittsville, the town of Rome, police department, and then Wisconsin Rapids Pick and Save. So um, there is information on our website and our Facebook page about this, um, but it's just uh, most of the locations run between um, 9 and noon or 10 and 2, 11 and 1. So um, look for uh, your corresponding community you know, the corresponding community that you're interested in, or you can call our office too if you have more questions about that. Also would recommend if you uh, look at dhs.wisconsin.gov, dhs.wisconsin.gov, um, they have a great section on here where you can actually look at, find a collection site near you and just type in your mm-hmm. zip code or your city or your county, and it pops up for you right there. Um, that's another great way of doing this. And Doing this certainly keeps it not only out of the hands of people that, you know, we don't want them having them, uh, certainly keeps it out of our landfills, our, our, our planet. Um, that is important. And it's it's one of those things, too, where it gets it out of the house, too. Like, uh, there's, there's I know a couple of people that have, like, just a bag full of these things, and, and they don't know what to do with them. They, they're just sitting there collecting dust. It gets it out of the house, too. It's, it's, it's not a very mm-hmm. big positive of it. Um. I appreciate your, 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 you guys uh, spending some time with us and everything you shared with us today. One more time, Nikki, if uh, people uh, need to know where to go to fill out that survey, can we uh, tell them where to go? The easiest way would go be to go to healthypeoplewoodcounty.org. And right across the top of that website, there's a big green banner that you can click on and it'll take you to that survey. 
And you can find out more by uh, following the Wood County Health Department on their uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram pages. Find out more about Healthy People Wood County in the same places, Facebook, Instagram, and go to their website, healthypeoplewoodcounty.org. Uh, Nikki, Christy, please say hi to the, everybody over there for us. You guys have a safe, fun weekend. Thank you so much. You too, James. Thanks for the time. Thank you. And a big thank you to Pam Hilke and the amazing scheduling and work she does week in and week out. We appreciate you, Pam. We'll have more Midday Magazine for you next week right here on 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR, locally grown radio.